Welcome to Baby Steps. Today, you asked, we are going to answer babystepsadvice at gmail.com. Write them in, folks. We've got a bunch of questions about babies, parents, parenting, random, and we're going <laughs> to answer things? it. Let's get into it. Uh, Ariel, question. Yes. How long should we allow parents to stay with us during postpartum after first baby? From Amanda. Hi, Fulmers. Love the pod. Thanks, Amanda. Currently, we are pregnant. <laughs> she just said pregnant. It was me that changed it. <clears throat> Pregat. For those of you who have not seen that old YouTube video, uh, like Gordon and Ant. What 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 should they look up? Um, um, I think just look up how to get Pregorn and Ant. It's so funny. Yahoo answers. <clears throat> Currently, we are pregnant with our first baby, and our parents slash in laws are asking us how long we would like them to stay after the birth of our first child, so they can plan accordingly. We'd appreciate any advice on this topic since we live out of state, away from family, and we have no frame of reference for how long we may need their assistance after the birth of our baby. Also. Is there any prep I should do to have longer term house guests? Oh, great question. <laughs> I love how the little okay. aside is actually a very yeah. big question. Um, uh, great topic. We also have parents who live out of town. Uh-huh. Yep. Uh, and uh, so, okay. So first answer here is how much do you like your in-laws <laughs> slash parents? Because that's going to make a really big difference. Uh, if... Uh, if uh, the way that we feel about having parents in town, um, it had a lot to, so we now have two kids and with the first one, it was tough having our parents there because we didn't really have a good place for them to stay. Yes. Right. But we needed the help. We mm -hmm. desperately needed the help. And they were all up in our business, but and, we but they needed were all the help business. so badly. We needed the help so bad. And we had no idea how to take care of a child and they were great. Um, and so, you know, it was a, it was a tough situation because we were living on top of each other. Um, but not we won't not getting any sleep, but we wanted them there so badly. Yeah. I would say that is one of the things that single handedly improved my relationship with my in-laws. Right. Is having kids, uh, having kids. Mm -hmm. you know, it, it, a weekend with in-laws went from, Okay, this will be kind of fun. I don't, not my family. I guess so. Mm -hmm. Be you know, you you kind of feel a little uncomfortable, right? Maybe you have your guard up. Now suddenly it's you mean I get to sleep in ah. and hang out, and someone will play with the baby, and I can read a book. My God, amazing! I'm so, yes, do you want to stay for longer? Exactly. So we <laughs> we we literally built a guest house because we liked having our parents and in-laws there so much because they are so helpful with kids. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but, but you really have to, it's, it's not just a question of like, how long should they stay? You know, we can't just say, Oh, two weeks, obviously, you know, it's, it's the sort of thing where, uh, if you love having your parents around or if you, you know, really yeah. like your in-laws, then be two absolutely. Months have them stay for as long as you want. You know, yeah. like if you're, well, <laughs> they're going to go to college at some point. Well, yeah, fair. <laughs> no, I would say like around six weeks is the time when you start to kind of get your bearings. Mm -hmm. Right. So during those first six weeks, it's really pretty tough and mm -hmm. you're going to need a lot of help. Now, six weeks is a very long time mm -hmm. to have people staying with you. So, uh, I think for the first child, we kind of broke it into maybe like three weeks and three weeks, something or like that. Or even two weeks and two weeks, two, two weeks, weeks, two weeks, and then we had a week off, and then yeah. two weeks, and then we had a week off. But I think three weeks in general is a pretty good amount of time where you'll feel like one week or two weeks is hardly, you know, it'll yeah. be over before you know it. Time goes by so fast because you're, you know, it, it, especially in those first six weeks, you're sleeping, uh, is, is very strange and it's off. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the, one of the things that I really, really appreciated having parents around for was, you know, because I was breastfeeding, I was handling, a, you know, a lot of the like nighttime feedings. Right. Mm -hmm. And so being able to hand off the baby in the middle of the day, mm -hmm. uh, and you know, for Ned too, like, cause you, you don't, uh, you don't just, sleep through 
like a baby crying at night, mm-hmm. you know? So it's not like Ned was sleeping through the night mm-hmm. either. Uh, and so, you know, we needed those daytime naps to, to, to kind of, you know, be there for our toddler and like be better parents, uh, and just be uh, yeah. present, you and, know? And even, you know, now that they're a little older, I mean, it can still be like that, like, you can get refreshed. Like my mom will be in there six fifteen. Mm. I can wake up, like knock on her door, sleepily hand over a baby, and then go back to bed. And it's great. I mean, yeah. it's it's huge. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, we, when your mom was here. So Ned's Ned's mom was here for two three, two weeks. Two yeah, weeks, two weeks. Yeah, and we we got used to having a little oh, bit of extra we were sleep like, in the morning. You mean, we slept till eight some days. Oh my god! I mean, she was just playing with she was holding Wes it down and Finn, with both holding kids. it down. Oh yeah. my goodness! Making French toast, and Ned mm-hmm. and I wake up and we're like, "Good lord, I have to go to work." <laughs> <laughs> like I don't think that's ever happened yeah, where I've woken up and I've been like, "I'm going to be late for work." Late for work. Normally it's five thirty a.m. and I'm like, "I have four I hours." I have four to hours kill. before I am able to start working. Yeah, I my body was in such a weird place. Uh, with all that extra sleep. Mm-hmm. So so the answer is, works for you. is about two weeks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, you know, two, three weeks, I think even with the the extra help, you might start yeah. feeling the, uh, and you know, it's just not it's not normally in your space. It can be. Uh, yeah, and things to do little, to, to prepare tough. to have people in your space. Yeah. Um, you're, there's going to be a lot going on. Uh, there's going to be a lot of sleeping in different places. You're going to be sleeping on the couch. You're going to be sleeping on the floor. Mm-hmm. You're going to be sleeping wherever you possibly can. So, you know, uh, and and also with the hormones of of like postpartum uh, and the stress and uh, just sort of mom jitters of being a first time mom, uh, it, at, at least for me, I found it very difficult to have a lot of people telling me what to do, um, you know, and, and having a bunch of different people with different ideas for how to parent my child. Mm-hmm. You know, I was going yeah, off love of the help. Didn't like the advice. Yeah. Yeah. It's the sort of thing <laughs> where like, I just want to sit here and, and be with my baby and, and feed them as I feel they need to be fed, you know, and then, Here's somebody saying, oh, you know, I, I really think that they're tired now. I think you should put them to sleep. And, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, like we, but we both have our differing opinions and I don't want to have this conversation right now. So, uh, so I'm going to do what I'm going to do and that's it. It You know, you know, if you have a space, maybe you have a, a garage, maybe you own a home, Take out a second mortgage. And no, turn don't take out a second mortgage. It, no, seriously. Borrow some money, turn that garage into living space. Figure out a way to give the people staying there, you know, because they're not staying as guests right now. You know, they're staying as roommates. They're basically. staying, they're, they're basically staying as roommates. They're giving and so, them their own space to, you know, they can make a coffee themselves in the morning or like, you know, I don't know if you. Have a little TV put in the mm-hmm. guest room or whatever, wherever they're staying. But like having the ability to maybe they can watch the TV show they want to watch. And you, you can, can watch the TV watch show, the TV that you, show you want to watch. watch or well, the, and the other thing, want. the other thing to think about is I feel like before kids, yeah. when our parents would come to visit, they were there to hang out with us and right. they were there. And, and so we felt the need to entertain them. And that's kind of can be exhausting. That's sort of what I completely exhausting. what I'm speaking of when I'm like, oh, OK, in-laws are coming. Yeah, right. completely exhausting because you're you're you, you feel like you need to be with them at every moment. Yeah. And what you want to create is a space for them where they can be alone and you can be alone because they are there to take care of you and to take care of your family. Mm-hmm. Um, at least, you know, in in this question, in I, this scenario, I, yeah. I assume that's that's the situation. Um, yeah. And so make it, make it a comfortable space for them to be able to take care of you, you Mm -hmm. know, like make it so that it's easy for your mom to, to, to like cook you a meal and they may not even know what you need help with. And you might be too tired to tell them, but they're usually down to help out with whatever you just need to let them know. Yeah. So if it's like laundry, just be very clear when you're talking about what would be most helpful, 
rather than being like, oh, it would be great if you know somebody took out this overflowing garbage, you can be like, hey, hey. can you please do this yeah. or whatever? Yeah, you know, whatever be, it is. be proactive. Uh, even that's something that we sort of learned after the fact is, yeah. is, is like, you know, w- even though they're your parents, uh, you know, they, they can't read your mind. They can't read your mind. They can't read your mind. Like yeah. they are there to help you. So and your let partner them, and you might have let like them a, help you. Yeah. Let them help you. You might have a shorthand over, you know, years mm-hmm. of living with each other or certain understanding of roles and responsibilities. Right. Well, when a baby comes, that's all going to be thrown out the window. Cause you're going to have, you know, not enough hours in the day. So much more trash. But the, uh, yeah, your your parents in laws might not know what you need. So mm-hmm. go for it. Yeah, and uh, I I know that we have more questions to get to, but there's also different parenting styles. Mm-hmm. You know, your parents may have may have parented you different than you plan to parent your kids. Right. And so you need to be very clear mm-hmm. uh, at, on the outset that like this is what we're doing. You know, uh, we we don't want you to to do this and we don't want you to do this. You know, next question. I've got a biter. Oh, boy. Uh, Carly writes. Hello, Fulmers. Love your pod. I have an 18 month old daughter who bites. Oh, (laughs) that's really it. She bites when she's mad, bites when she's hungry, bites when she's tired. We have a lot of incident reports from daycare of her biting other kids, sometimes provoked, but <laughs> no! usually not. Wow. Sometimes provoked. Any advice on how to get her to do something else when she's feeling big feelings? She's strong-willed, but my shoulders are kind of tired from being bruised from her bites. Let me know what you think. Hmm. Uh, That's tough. Did we have a biter? Wes was never at, really at time, that bad. There were a couple times where he would bite you or pull your hair. Mm-hmm. Just big feelings. It's yeah. totally, it's totally a thing with like that eighteen month to two and a half years, like just big, big feelings and not knowing what to do with those feelings. The general rule of thumb from toddler books that we've read is, you know, kind of take a moment to stop uh-huh. the behavior if it's you know, dangerous or if it's hurting someone, right? Like right. immediately stop it. Right. Um, by saying no or stop or, or distracting them right. with, with something else. You know, that's a big one is if you have a, a toddler that has some really big feelings and uh, doesn't know how to express those feelings, you know, take them out of the situation first, uh, you know, by distracting them with something. So instead of, you know, yelling or using a lot of words to say like that really uh, it, to to like try to explain to them that that really hurts me and that sort of thing because that's that's what I go to uh, yeah. when when I feel the need to to like discipline my toddler is is I I use a lot of words and I say because sure, we're know, adults we right. resolve things through talking and so I but say to like them, please when don't do that in a very emotional state mm-hmm. words are just like blah, 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 blah. right exactly and so removing them from the situation and and, and like. Uh, d- treating what is actually happening in their brain, you know. So, yeah. like you said, they bite when they are tired or or hungry or something like that. You know, feed them or or give them a nap and then talk about the biting. You know. Yes. Um, the one point about distraction, though, is um, you don't want to ignore uh, your kids' feelings, right? If right. you are immediately going to a distraction or trying to redirect them you're skipping the step of kind of emotionally connecting with them, understanding mm-hmm. their feelings, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I remember there was one book that we read that talked about it like a fast food order. Right. And it was like, I'm so mad. And you say, you're so mad. You know, <laughs> when you go to McDonald's, you're like, I want a quarter pounder with cheese. They say, you want a quarter pounder with, quarter pound with cheese? Yeah. <laughs> you, you like repeat you what they're saying. That. No, no, you don't want friends with that. Yeah. And but, like assure them that you have heard what they're saying and yeah, that you hear what they're feeling. Repeating what they're saying mm-hmm. and kind of getting like physically getting down to their level and kind of helping them work through things by saying what they're saying and not necessarily saying like, ah, oh, you want a quarter pounder with cheese? Well, uh, beef comes from cows. Yeah, let me and, let me tell you what's uh, on that quarter pounder with the cheese. The cheese comes from cheddar, which is uh, vivid. <laughs> you know, yeah. like don't use too many words. words. Yeah. 
oh, Wes wants trucks. Wes wants trucks. And and after you've kind of connected with them emotionally, then you can pivot and redirect towards, well, and we can't play with trucks right now because it's bedtime, but why don't we read a story about trucks? Right, right, right. Let's do yeah. truck story. Let's do trucks. Yeah, let's read. Let, let's tell a story about trucks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So uh, kind of... Uh, affirming what it is that they are feeling Mm -hmm. and then um redirecting that that feeling to something else uh and also kind of solving the the problem if there's an underlying yeah yeah. if there's an underlying issue yeah exactly tired hungry so so if you have if if you're it doesn't always work right Uh, i mean here we are it absolutely does not talking from our podcast mountain of big (laughs) gods of good behavior but that knows work my heart goes out to you yeah no i I can't Uh, tell you how many times we have definitely also been not worked for us and uh, (laughs) had things screamed at us or thrown at us um Oh, but that is that the, is the what, kicking for me. It's yeah. like you've got a biter. I've got a kicker mm-hmm. like soccer boy. Uh, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have actually started to say like kicking is for the soccer field. Wesley, mm. you do not kick people. Right. Like you do not kick me. You do not kick your brother. Like yeah. this is not OK. Yeah, because yeah. But, you know, like when he kicks me, hey, even that's maybe too many words. Yeah, it's it probably is too many words. I told you. Like, no, kick. that's. That's my problem. No kick. No kick. No kick. No kick. <laughs> like that's my problem is I use too many words. I say, you know, what I need to do is say no kicking and then say, I know you're tired. So let's go read a book or something like that because mm-hmm. he's, he's normally kicking me because either he needs attention yeah. or because he's tired. Right. Like that's it. Yeah. It's easy but when you talk about it in an armchair. I am sorry. But when you're about your in these trenches. We, we haven't had the experience yet of like having, because uh, Wes doesn't have any friends. <laughs> um, we haven't had the experience yet of, of a child, like of, of like yeah. hearing from daycare yep. that your child has like X problem. Mm-hmm. Um, I can only imagine the things that are kind of come back from preschool. Oh like, my God, oh, yeah. you know, your child did this today or your child did this today. That's got to be. That's got to be so hard. Yeah, we even I remember seeing it on a playground where like some other kid like the, all kids wear masks on the playground right. these days. But the kid is like wanting to like do something with Wes or share or something. And Wes is like, like, no, and like runs away. Oh, yeah. And the kid's dad was like, it's OK that that kid doesn't uh, doesn't like you or doesn't want to play. It was like something a little like a little like I was like. Hey, buddy. I mean, that's come on now. <laughs> that's not exactly. <laughs> that's not totally what's going on here. I mean, let's not assign an attribute to this child, but maybe a, a transient. Uh, he is feeling this way in this moment. It's that like, kid oh, is no, mean. That, that, that kid's, kid's mean. mean. <laughs> that kid's mean. Like, all right, buddy. Okay, sure, your kid's great, uh, but uh, here we are. Everyone's trying to. Enjoy We're all playground. just doing our best all here. just doing our best. I don't think he's innately mean. Maybe he's being mean in this moment. And uh, I'm, I'm intervening. So, okay. Also, we are here first. <laughs> I don't think that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also, know. we were here or first. Whatever, so. <laughs> whatever it was. It was like <laughs> a dad that was a little like telling his kid like that our kid was not, not good. And I was like, okay. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, all here, right. I, I could ask you one. Sure. Ooh, I love this one. Chef asking for food advice. Mm. Hello, Ariel and Ned. First off, I want to thank you for the thing that is baby steps. It is a great service to parents, new and experienced, to hear your stories and hear the advice from experts you invite to discuss the many angles of parenting. That is so nice to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do try and create a community here at Baby Steps. Mm. So welcome. We're trying. And uh, yeah. Uh, I'm a chef and my most recent client has almost no regard to my creations I bring forth to the table. He is also nine months old with one tooth. Ah. Congratulations. One tooth. He hates, he loves the fruit, but how can I get my son to eat more things? He hates chicken, but he loves oatmeal with almond butter and dragon fruit. What are your favorite things to cook for Finn and also Wes? Also, do you eat what they eat? Thank you. Anonymously, but sincerely, Jason Bourne. 
a uh, big fan, Jason. No. Uh, love, <laughs> love your movies. Uh, even the one without Matt Damon. Anyways, I mean, here we are, cookbook authors, uh-huh. date night cookbook. We we spent years making all these recipes. We got 81 recipes. Check it out, by the way, datenightcookbook.com. Pre-order your copy today. <laughs> but our son is it's often suffers from the same issue in that we make these glorious, beautiful meals, and oh then he's God. like, I want butter noodles. And he wants the and he and he wants the specific type of noodle. He wants like the curly noodle mm-hmm. and and he wants it with butter on it that he can see. Mm-hmm. That's just toddlers. Yeah. Have have we ever told you this, Miles? Yeah. yeah he's no, like, he's I want to so see particular. if it melts in. He's like, no. Like we make these when beautiful I want meals. A whole ass chunk of butter on there. He literally That's not okay. I have to put boy. I have to put a piece of butter on every single noodle so that he can see the butter on the noodle. If the noodles are too hot and the butter melts. We have to wait for the noodles to get cold so that we can put the butter on the noodle so that he can see it. Not it's, great. It's stupid. Great. It's ridiculous. Not, not. Probably a little too much butter. Probably a little intake. too much butter. And a, little a little butter is okay. And like, we're probably catering to like our crazy toddler. Like we could just say, no, eat your noodles. Yeah, maybe and then we he need would like a fine. sleep intervention, like the way that we did a food intervention, like the way we did sleep. But I am heartened because our general philosophy is... He eats what we eat. He eats what we eat. That's that's, that's really attempt number one. We and then started if he doesn't, with that at the beginning. Yeah. Is we said like, okay, we are going to like we're having pasta tonight with vegetables, and so here is a, a like some pasta with vegetables for you, and he would eat it. You know, mm-hmm. like we started with eggs and spinach in the mornings, and Ned and I would eat eggs and spinach, and we would give Wes some eggs and spinach, and that's just sort of how we did it. Um. And he he actually he is a very uh, a very good eater. Like he he's he's an adventurous eater. Last night we had Indian food, mm-hmm. you know. But similarly, there are just certain things that toddlers don't like. Well, he certain, didn't want to eat the chicken. He didn't want to eat the Indian chicken. Food. Yeah, he didn't want to eat the huh. chicken in the chicken tikka masala. He just wanted to eat the the the, sauce. the, the, the masala. Yeah. yeah, the chicken tikka masala sauce. <laughs> he wanted to like. Spoon adorable the by sauce, the way. which like is basically butter. Orange, just his yeah. mouth coated with orange masala sauce. Yeah. Like tongue all orange. Yeah. But like we we offer him what we are eating. And if he doesn't eat that, then that's up to him. But we do ask him to like take bites yeah. of things. And um, I think once they get to a certain age, you can say, you know, hey, you're three now. Yeah. You have to try one bite of this. Mm. You know, I, I like we That's something that, that your mom did with you. She kind of uh and and, yeah. and and she also does it with with Wes. She's like, okay, you need to take take like a bite. Right. Um I remember her refrain would be like, How would you know you like chocolate ice cream if you never tried it? Yeah. This I was is like, a- great point, mom. Brussels sprouts still are bad. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a nine month old, so you can't really yeah. reason with them. No, um, no. So what I uh, have learned, um, and actually we are going, going to have a um, like a food expert on the podcast. Ooh, how exciting. Yeah, it's going to be very exciting. Um, but so there and there are also there are different ways of teaching your baby to eat. Mm-hmm. You know, there's something called baby led feeding where you offer them certain things and and if they like them or don't like them, you know, nine months is is still uh, still very young. And so, yes, offer them food. But if they don't eat it, they're still getting all, if not most of their nutrition from, uh, you know, either formula or breast milk. Mm-hmm. Um, and mm-hmm. they will until they are about a year old. Mm-hmm. Um, and so also don't stress out about how much food they're eating. You know, that's that's one thing that was really difficult for me was um you know, thinking that, oh, my baby's not eating, so they're not getting enough nutrition mm-hmm. and and I'm doing something wrong. But the fact is, like, I I was putting pressure on my kid to, to like, it's my food pressure that I'm putting on them. Yikes. You know, they do not need that pressure to eat. Mm-hmm. They can eat whatever they want. Um, and they'll, they'll eat when they're hungry. They'll eat what they like. And mm-hmm. they'll learn... By by you not pressuring them to eat, 
uh, they'll learn that food is a fun thing mm. and not like this stressful thing that, oh, I have to eat my entire plate or, oh, I need to eat like these vegetables and and this meat or else like I'm not eating a balanced meal because, you know, your your toddler will kind of this is this is something that, that Ned and I sort of had to to learn is that your toddler will eat however much or however little they want. You can't force them to eat anything. Um, that's just the way toddlers are. Um, but you can you can sort of mold their feelings about food um, by the food that you eat and uh, kind of creating an experience around food, like eating together at the table um, or uh, feeding them the food that you eat. Yeah. Anyway. Was, yeah. Did I go on a rant? No, no. Okay. I, I mean, it's true. Yeah, I think that's that's a really great, like creating good food perspectives mm -hmm. by like eating all around at the table together mm -hmm. and kind of sharing that communal aspect, I think is great. It's, yeah. you know, I, I was more reflecting on uh, our toddler's relationship with food and uh, or, or lack is like it has pretty narrow uh, narrow palate, which is, I think it dis certainly seems like it right now. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I think that's just because he is a toddler. Yeah. And, you know, uh, and, and he likes what he likes. <laughs> but we also, we you know, uh, since Finn has been, uh, uh, you know, a little bit more kind of needy mm -hmm. uh, as he, like, since he was really young, um, we've kind of done the easy thing with Wes where yeah. we feed him what he likes. Yeah. You know, we haven't really been trying to give him new stuff. Yeah, but I think there's a probably a degree of separation that you could do, right? If they like one thing, okay, maybe try something a little bit different. Yeah. And a little bit different. Maybe a different than sauce. Like plopping squid in just out of the blue. Yeah. Just keep introducing fun things to the kid. Mm -hmm. And they'll eat it and they'll get used to it. And, uh, you know, I think that parents can get into this habit of, Feeding kids the same thing every day. Or feeding kids kids meals always. Right. Or feeding kids kids meals. Exactly. You know, feeding them things that that they think that kids should be eating, like macaroni and cheese or something like that. And the fact is that kids can eat what we're eating. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, barring a couple of things that maybe. Yeah, maybe not the ghost pepper. Maybe not the ghost pepper. <laughs> you know, but but and 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 kids can't have honey until they're one. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there there are just like a few things that there are a few rules, um, a choking hazards, you know, um, but barring those things, kids can eat what we are eating, mm. make it soft for kids that only have one tooth, you know, but, <laughs> but like kids can eat solids. They can gum like soft carrots, things like that. Um, just offer it to them and, and, and make sure that you are there with your kids. Never leave your kids alone to eat. That's a big one because, um, you know, you, you just got to make sure that they're swallowing and, mm -hmm. uh, and all that sort of thing. Just be safe. But yeah, get the day night cookbook. There's tons of family recipes. Mm -mm. Got food for the whole family. Your child will eat happy and healthy with the day night cookbook. <laughs> uh, no, but seriously, day night cookbook.com. Okay. Who will watch the baby? Good I'm morning. I'm excited to hear this. Good morning, Ariel and or Ned. <clears throat> It's Ned. And, and or Ariel. Miles. <laughs> In one of your podcasts, you said the most important thing was to figure out before starting family is who will watch the baby. Who's the baby? Who's the baby? <laughs> I'm not where I want to be with my career. And I'm also concerned if I take five years off to raise my child before they start school, that my career may never recover. Mm. My current job offers 12 weeks of maternity leave. That's great. That's my great. husband gets six weeks paternity leave. Awesome. Uh, which I know is more than most, but who will watch our baby after that if I go back to work? Mm -hmm. We are three hours from the nearest relative. And most child care providers near us don't take small infants. Whoa. Mm. My okay. husband had a very negative experience with nannies when he was little. Would love if you could have an expert on your show to talk about this dilemma more. If you could share your thoughts with me, if you have time. Thank you for the show. I've been watching Try Guys videos since 2014. Whoa. OG. And I've loved seeing you and your family grow and accomplish so much. Best wishes to the Fulmers. Thanks, Miranda. We appreciate it. Okay. 12 weeks is great. Awesome. Yes. Six weeks, also awesome. I mean, this is a, this is the question that everybody has to deal with. 
because yeah, it's, it's really difficult. Um, kids at that age, there aren't many places that will accept like infant infants. Right. In a group setting. In a group setting. Yeah. Exactly. Because they just require too much care. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, so Finn is six months now and he's just starting to sit up. He's just starting to like interact with things, interact with toys, eat food. And I feel like that is kind of the age that kids can start going to uh, like a daycare and really thriving there, mm-hmm. you know? Um, not to say that kids that, that go earlier don't thrive, but um, I, it, it is more difficult for the the people doing the childcare. And so perhaps, yeah, they, they say like no kids under six months or something like that. And so then what do you do? When does the cutoff uh, start for many places? Oh, I don't know. I'm just assuming it's around six months. Mm -hmm. I think you can do a couple different things. So one thing we've talked about on the podcast before is we're a big fan of nanny shares. Mm -hmm. It saves on budget and it can be a great way to give your child one or two playmates. It can be kind of hard to arrange because you need to know somebody else who has a kid around the same age. But Mm -hmm. if you do, you know, get involved in your local uh, local neighborhood groups and Facebook groups, whatever. Kind of create that community. maybe ma- meet someone and kind of create that community. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, the, 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 there's it's tough because you do have to figure something out. Mm-hmm. And it, it may not be either or, though, right? You're saying, oh, I don't want to take five years off my work. But maybe you could take one year off or something like that. Right. Um, yeah. Or, it's a- or just six months rather than... Uh, three months. It's a tough decision. And, you know, one of the things that one of our friends did actually, who uh, also only got a certain amount of time off was uh, she took her maternity leave and her husband kept working. And Mm. then her husband took his paternity leave after she went back to work. Oh, interesting. So that way you get the 12 weeks plus the six weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I know that it doesn't always work out quite like that, but Um, that way you get a little bit of extra time Mm -hmm. with the, you know, without having to deal with this childcare conundrum. Um, but, uh, yeah, nanny shares are great because you, you know, you don't really have to take on the onus of, of like hiring a nanny and, uh, and, and like, you know, having a, uh, like an employee in your house type of thing. Um, we love our nanny. She's a part of our family. Uh, and I don't know what we could do without her. Uh, because yeah, it, it's uh, like kids under three that aren't going to school or preschool or like daycare. Um, you have to have childcare for them. They need to be watched like all the time. Um, the other thing that you could potentially do is, you know, three hours is far, but you could kind of make it more a, a, a little bit easier for family to right. uh to come in and stay for a little while maybe you know if it's if it's a matter of of getting through like two or three months right. before you can get a kid you're into eligible for organized daycare yeah, yeah exactly um then there there are ways to cobble something together mm-hmm. in terms of child care and there also are a you know a lot of like maybe less large daycares that are sort of mm-hmm. a hybrid between a nanny share and uh yeah like a co-op or a, a like a family yeah. like a, a home-based daycare something a little bit more organized than just bringing your baby over to a stranger's house right but that's effectively <laughs> what it is <laughs> yeah yeah i mean and and really uh you know when we we aren't really addressing the like the fact that your husband had a bad experience with nannies mm-hmm. um that sounds difficult. Um, and I can't, you know, I can't imagine what, what that could have been like. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, always vetting and, and really taking the time to, to trust that the people that you're leaving your kids with is, yeah. is where you want them to be. Um, and I think it starts with your network, right? Yeah. Your, your on the ground parent friends, you know, uh, online communities like this are great. Uh, but when it comes to childcare, the best resources are going to be people in the area where you live. Yeah. And yeah. yes, there are Facebook groups, but then also if you know, go to like your local 
mommy and me like gym classes or movie right. nights or whatever those kind of offerings are for yeah. uh, new parents where you can connect with other people. Yeah. Make some friends, get some digits. <laughs> with, uh, with, with Wes, um, one of the things that we did, I mean, I, I took a fair amount of time off. I think I took about four months off and, um, uh, we, you know, we would, we met some, some friends through like neighbors. I tried to make friends with like moms that were pushing strollers on the street. We live near a, a library that had like, uh, music classes every Tuesday. And so I, you know, I would try to go to the music classes and I would try to make friends with moms. Uh, you know, this leads to a whole nother, uh, like topic of trying to make mom friends, mm -hmm. um, you know, and like how difficult that is, but kind of, you know, getting yourself out there and, and, and kind of reaching out, you know, I think that, uh, being a new mom can be very isolating and, um, uh, reaching out to other people or, or, or just being in groups of other moms, you can kind of, uh, find out what, what you can get from that network. Um, you know, whether it be, uh, a nanny recommendation or a nanny share, or maybe a, a co-op situation. Um, there, there are options out there, especially, you know, if, if in your area, uh, the, the, most of the daycares aren't taking infants, you are not the only one with this problem. There are going to be other moms with infants yeah. that, that don't have a place to, 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 you know, send their kid for childcare. Um, and so you can come up with, with things together. Um, and uh, and that's that may be your best option. Next question is aunties and uncles. Oh, I hey, love this. Ned and Ariel, I love your podcast. I learn a lot and it helps pass the time while I work. How do you feel about friends being referred to as aunts and uncles to your kiddos? What are your thoughts on it? I know there's a lot of mixed feelings, but it has come more acceptable over the years. I mentioned it to my coworkers that my friend refers to me as an auntie to her toddler. My coworkers think it's weird and taking away from the specialness of the title of aunt and uncle mm. for siblings. Hope you guys consider this question for the podcast. Thanks, Molly. That's a great question because we also refer to people as aunties and uncles. Yeah. The other try guys. Are the other try guys are uncles. Uncles. Well, okay. So I guess none of us have a brother, so we can't ask right. them how they feel. But yeah, I wonder how I our think, I mean, we, sisters we feel have about. sisters who, who are aunties. Um, I think, okay, so part of this I th comes from the fact that there are other, other cultures that actually just call like other people aunties and uncles, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, they like that they don't have to be related uh, by blood um, it, that, you know, like people are that that's just the word that you use for people you, you use like Tia. It's just anti, mm -hmm. you know, or we, we have some Filipino friends who, who just like, it's just anti, mm -hmm. you know, that's sort of just what you call people that are in your village, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like not, not your, <laughs> not your like village literally, but in your child rearing village, yeah, yeah. um, you know, just your, your friends, your friend groups, yeah, your friend groups, people that, that are just around your kid, you call them anti, mm -hmm. um, you call them uncle. Um, but yeah, does it take away from the specialness of your actual like blood relative? Um, yes and no. Uh, if so, our sisters are very involved in our kids' lives, and I think that Wes and Finn are both very aware that they have a special relationship with our sisters and that the word that we use for, uh, you know, for like loved ones, um, doesn't actually mean blood relative. Yeah. You know, um, I do wonder how our sisters feel about it. I think they're okay with us calling other people aunties. I think so too, because they, they're they're They know that their place in our kids' lives is very secure. Yeah. You know, that there's, there's no way that, uh, that Wes would think that, you know, somebody else is, is like more important than our sisters. Right. Because they are so important and they're such a huge part of our kids' lives. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I guess you would kind of need to ask your siblings. Yeah. If they minded. Yeah. I personally think it's okay and kind of fun <laughs> and helps your friends become 
part of your uh, right. your child rearing village a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And it also indicates to your kids that like, you know, we have you have a lot of loved ones. Yeah. You know that that these people are are we need mean something to us that. too. We need like a like a hybrid name, like a like a, like a Franti. A Franti, yeah, yeah, <laughs> friend, yeah. These auntie? are our Franties. <laughs> <laughs> or a frunkle <laughs> this is your frunkle <laughs> he's your fun uncle he's your fun uncle uncle uh, oh uncle keith i don't know what to, what do you think that the hybrid name should be uh auntie a a calling friends like a-holes no <laughs> wait hold on uh well, well wes also doesn't call Danielle and Grace, our sisters, mm -hmm. he doesn't call them Aunt Grace or Aunt Danielle. He, he calls Danielle Nene. He calls Danielle Nene. Yeah, that's that's the other thing is like they have special names. Yeah. So maybe maybe there's that. Maybe that's a way that you can uh, like solve this problem is you can call everyone auntie and uncle. Right. But give the people that yeah, really distinct name. you give them like a really important name like, like Nene. <laughs> Mima. Mima. <laughs> yeah. Ham ham. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, give them like a pet bub, name. Bub. Give them a pet. Give the Peep give pop. your family members a pet <laughs> name and then everybody else can Cuckoo. be called by the under the umbrella of Auntie yeah, and Uncle. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get very just like all of our boomer parents wanting like specific right. non I want I'm this, not grandpa, I want, grandma. No, that's that was what my mom was. Yes. I want to be Gigi. <laughs> I want to be <laughs> Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love that. I love that. Give him a pet name. All right. Next question. I'd love it if I could type Howdy from Texas. Well, you just did. I love y'all and absolutely adore the Baby Steps podcast. We don't have many parent friends, so watching Baby Steps makes me feel like I'm having a glass of wine with other parent friends. Hey. Yeah, hey. You know, this comes out on Sunday mornings, but hey, for those of you that wait till Sunday evening and crack open a nice Cabernet, a nice Chardonnay, Chardonnay. More like it, welcome to Baby Steps After Dark. Oof, I would love this Mom's had actually a hard day. Baby, can we do baby steps after dark? Oh, yeah. Bow chicka bow wow. Bow chicka bow. <laughs> <laughs> Our little dude was seven months and overnight went from uh, Happy Harris to uh, a little wild child. I'm fortunate enough to be able to take him to work with me every day, but this I need mommy is getting nuts. How can we work through this? Did y'all experience this with Wes? How can I not be negative 1000% useless at work? Your friend in Texas. Wait, you can take your kid to work? Oh, wow. This is, I mean, this is totally this out is, of my wheelhouse. My God. Absolutely. Well, okay. So, but the the actual question here is how to deal with a, uh, like a, a toddler that is, uh, that, that is clingy. Right. That um, while you are trying to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. So there, that's the, that's the bigger question here. Yeah. And we deal with that all the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Trying to live your life while also <laughs> trying to be 100% present for your kids. It's tough. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, leads to a lot of uh, showers with daddy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, daddy needs to take a shower. Daddy needs to take a shower. You can either. And also loves taking showers. Play by yourself or play in shower with daddy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah that's, a, that's a big one. And usually the answer is. Squeegee. Yes. I, I shall squeegee the walls. While well, daddy. Very studiously. Takes care of his <laughs> ablutions. Shower. Um, hmm. Yeah. How, how old? Uh, seven months? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, oh, you just wait until your kid is actually saying like, dad. <laughs> yeah. I mean, gosh, seven months. I mean, that's not really old enough to uh reason with them but uh it's certainly you can say things and then make clear like mommy's doing this now you're going to do this now mm -hmm. and then just walk away and do it and i uh, might protest for a second but you know as long as they're fed clothed mm -hmm. changed Safe. have things to play with they'll be okay yeah and they'll you know, often after 60 seconds just kind of get right to it 
that's a really tough question because maybe coming up with uh, uh, like things for the kid to do for a certain period of time. Yeah. Like if, if you know that there's something that, that will keep them occupied for 15 minutes so that you can get something done and then you can spend, you know, then you can give them a hundred percent of your attention for five to 10 minutes and then you kind of do it again, you know, almost like time yeah. boxing where you're like, you, you aren't, uh, you know, I think the most difficult uh, thing to do is to give your child 50% of your energy and give your work 50% of your energy. Totally. Because totally. then neither of them are getting the best of right, you. Because what a seven month old really needs is like Just kind time. of interacting with you and like yeah. playing. And and uh, so but we have found that that the worst thing that you can do is to to try to juggle both at the same it, time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, with in a two parent setting will like alternate where mm -hmm. one person will hang out with the child and the other person will do their thing mm -hmm. and then switch mm -hmm. because we have we have kids that we <laughs> that we have found need 100 percent of our attention yeah um there are kids out there who can kind of play by themselves um and wes is starting to get there but they they definitely need our attention and uh and so yeah, that's something that has worked for us is to to you know kind of juggle our time that way, giving our work 100% attention and knowing that our kid is safe with somebody else mm -hmm. or 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 with a task and and then giving our kid 100% attention and kind of uh filling up their bucket with with like mommy daddy time, mm -hmm. you know, and then interactivity. Yeah. You know, energy with toys and reading yeah. books. Yeah. Just, you know, sparking their imagination and then going back to. I definitely, because Finn will be, this was more when you were breastfeeding at night and sleeping in the morning, right? Mm -hmm, so I would mm -hmm. take care of Finn and Wes at the same time. And that's obviously tough for anyone. Right. But like the way I would get around it was like, if Finn needed to feed, I would give Finn a bottle and then would have to kind of verbally engage Wes to make sure that he wasn't running off and lit setting the house on fire. Right. Um, but if, if Finn was like relatively calm, I would like set him up with a toy or an activity or something to kind of play with. Right. And then focus on Wes or focus on the other things to do to get the morning going. Yeah. And that, that worked, but you know, there's only so long that that works for. Right. Before the baby, the, you know, seven month old here, which is probably similar to Finn in your case. Uh huh needs your attention because they're bored yeah. they need something yeah exactly so. that's that's the thing is a, a seven month old they just they just need you yeah you know they need they have certain needs they need to be fed they need to 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 sleep and they need like attention you know they need to have a little bit of interaction because they're just their brains are are going crazy mm -hmm. you know and so so their attention span with a toy or something like that is only going to last so long. Yeah. You know, and it's tough. And I if that's what, what this person does too. Yeah. You know, it really if, is. Depends. there a way that you could make the child a part of a, it? A part of it? Yeah. Like if you can bring your kid to work, I imagine there's only so many jobs that that it's that don't work in a heavy machinery factory. Right. right? That wouldn't be allowed. Yeah. Exactly. But like if it's something where uh, I love doing like front carrier type of stuff with uh -huh. the six month old, seven month old type of baby uh and like narrating what you're doing yeah because they just get right? to, to experience the world with you yeah that's a great idea yeah because so, that's that's what they're looking for is just like i like they're tr so they're trying to learn words they're trying to sense different things and, and that's probably why they get fussy as and needy of you is because they're you know looking at the same thing or the same toy right. for too long and they're like getting bored yeah, exactly. And of course, they'll take a couple of naps during the day where you can totally be 100% and exactly. be more hands-free. But yeah, that's what I would try and do. Yeah, really take advantage of those naps too. Mm -hmm. You know, so so like give your kid a lot of attention and then like when they're down for their nap, get as much done as you possibly can. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Dogs and babies question. Oh, boy. Hi, Ariel and Ned. My husband and I are hoping to start some family planning and would love to hear your experience with dogs and babies. 
Mm. We have had our lab mix since she was about 11 weeks old and she's now four. That's mm. very similar to Bean, actually. Uh, she has always been a little hesitant around kids and hasn't met many, especially now in COVID time. How did Bean adjust to Wes when he came home as a newborn versus when he started getting more mobile? Mm. Any tips or planning you recommend for making sure fur babies are happy and everyone is safe? Thanks for creating this podcast. I love listening and I love getting your perspective on all things baby related. Oh, thanks. That's very sweet. All right. Dogs. Dogs. Babies. Dogs and babies. Dogs and babies. Dogs and babies. Babies and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Two babies and one becomes a dog. <laughs> this is sort of a like where it started versus where it is now kind of it, situation. Yeah, that's exactly the right We phrasing. started with the best of intentions. <laughs> We did everything. We brought home the baby blanket, you know, let the dog smell it. Mm -hmm. Bean was very curious, very cautiously, you know, putting his nuzzle up to the crib and kind of bumping it with his nose. And it was very cute, very precious. And everything was great. And then the crawling started. Then the baby became a menace for the dog. Well, yes, the baby dog became didn't a help. For the dog. Dog, dog, dog was not, not help. helping, barking, waking the baby up with naps. Mm hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a tough relationship to be sure because uh, Bean loved following that baby around because he was covered in food, mm -hmm. covered in food. Mm -hmm. And Bean is very food uh, motivated. Mm -hmm. He's a very food motivated dog. Many dogs are. Mm -hmm. um, and so he would sit at the at Wes's feet when he was eating and he would eat anything that was dropped. And he learned that baby equals food. Right. And so he would, f and so Bean would follow Wes around. And then when Wes started toddling and crawling, mm -hmm. Wes got really interested in Bean mm -hmm. and started pulling his hair. Right. And or Bean loving the food so much would try and eat it out of Wes's hand. Mm -hmm. Wes would get upset, would try and start hitting him to get him to not do that. Exactly. Because he's, you know, two. So. <laughs> Uh, doesn't understand how to do doggy cues yet. So we have had That's a tough. we've had a difficult relationship with the babies and Bean because I don't think that we handled that food relationship very well. We, I th I think in retrospect maybe shouldn't have let Wes wander around with food mm -hmm. uh, because so that Bean couldn't eat it, mm -hmm. and so that like the relationship between Probably Wes and Bean idea. wasn't so like. Uh, about food it, yeah it, it it was it was doomed from the beginning it seems you know and so now wes is always like whenever wes is around dogs he's kind of like i don't want that dog sitting near me because he's going to take my food he's like actually scared that dogs are going to take his food yeah, even if even they're sitting now at the table that he's older or, and knows not to like smack them or whatever yeah he'll still kind of Try and shush them away like right a fly and be like go be. away because <laughs> I don't want you near me because you're gonna take my food. And yeah. so then the dog thinks that Wes is acting aggressively towards them. Yeah. And then we have to kind of be like, I'm so, I, I'm so sorry. Our toddler's not hitting your dog. It, he just doesn't want him to eat his snack. <laughs> you know? And yeah, so or, you know, we've had to deal with like being like growling anytime Wes walks was, by. Or, you know, kind of these like territorial possessive it's like now they're both a little possessive about their either their, their space things, yeah because bean doesn't want to be like grabbed at or uh -huh. smacked at or if the food where west doesn't want to be get his food stolen right that's been tough it's been tough okay so so that's what we did wrong <laughs> yeah uh, so what can you do right <laughs> yeah what can you do right i mean we've some people have asked like hey where's bean i don't see him on your instagram uh, lately bean's actually been staying with uh ariel's parents had living his best life running with their dog mm -hmm. and like getting to be someone's baby again for this type COVID, period of time. COVID was tough for Bean and Wes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, also when it was really when the newborn, you know, right. Yeah. More or less for the last six months, we've, we have not had a dog in the household as we've really focused on the newborn baby. Yeah. And we couldn't really follow Wes and Bean around and make sure that they were playing nicely. Yeah. So now that Finn's getting older, We'll reintroduce Bean back to the household uh -huh. and we will, uh, I think, try and like uh, just reset this relationship. And Wes, I think, is old enough that we can teach him how to use like treats and dog mm -hmm. dog stuff to like get Bean to do certain things. Yeah. Right? Once he kind of can understand like, oh, 
Bean doesn't just do whatever Bean wants. Like I can kind of teach adjust him how his to, behavior, yeah. teach him how to do then I think it'll make a whole world of difference. Yeah, we need to we need to re teach them how to interact with each other. Yeah. You know, and so one way that you can uh, you know, avoid what happened to us is teach your kid how to interact with your dog. Uh it, so yeah. you know, you sort of uh uh glossed over it, but we brought home a baby blanket. Mm-hmm. Um so that Bean could like get the smell of the baby and understand mm-hmm. that like there's going to be a new human being in yeah. this house. And I would try and keep your dog's routines pretty similar. That's a big thing that we weren't good at. Mm-hmm. Like uh, we, the way that we did exercise with Bean wasn't kind of like a daily walk. It we was like we would take him to the dog park. Now all of a sudden that is way harder to do. Right. We didn't really feel comfortable taking an infant to a dog park. Yeah. You know, just to like but for we safety weren't really reasons. in the habit of doing like a, a morning walk with Bean. So right. then he started getting less exercise, which leads him to being more like, you know, cagey yeah. or caged up of like, oh, just stir crazy is what I'm trying to say. We had a, a very good routine like sleep schedule with Bean where when we were going to bed, mm-hmm. like literally getting into bed, we would put him in his crate for sleep. And mm-hmm. so, you know, his his crate was his safe space. And then when we had a baby, <laughs> we're turning on the light in the middle of the night mm-hmm. to feed the baby or to change a diaper or something like that. And Bean's like, what is going on? Out. Here I am in my crate. Let me out. Is it daytime? Is it nighttime? I don't understand. Or the toddler is kind of crawling and like messing mm-hmm. with his crate. Right. Yeah. 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 Of like here, this is my spot. And now the kid like, you know, I mean, Wes, like I remember he would like pull beans, like bedding out and throw it somewhere. Right. Just he was, to, like just Wes was interested in what this was. Yeah. So keeping the dog's routines a little bit more, um, like sacred, yeah. you know, and giving making, them, giving the dog your attention too, giving them that walk, mm-hmm. treating them. Uh, we joke that he was our baby being the dog. Yeah. And then he became a dog. Right. After exactly. The baby. But it, there is truth to that because like you, there's no, there's your, you are at the end of your energy and yeah, you don't always have the time to say, give the dog a 45 minute long shampoo bubble scrub right right which we used to love doing <laughs> right and then the, you know and then there's like the feeding you know so so we're like we yeah. were we we had new routines like we would we would feed bean his dinner when we were eating dinner mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. then it was like dinner time got to be so scattered that you know beans eating at a different time every day and we're not he, he doesn't really understand like when he's going to get his food or where it's coming from or yeah just trying really hard to keep your dog's routines uh as normal as possible uh even when you have a baby in the house and trying to give them as much attention as possible and watching them pretty closely so that you can intervene before the hair grabbing say Mm. occurs or the food stealing but I mean, it's hard if, you know, I, you know, I thought we were watching them, but it can happen so fast. Right. One thing I will say is that when you have a toddler who is starting to eat, it's great to have a dog oh, yeah. to clean up after them. B- <laughs> There's vacuum so cleaner. much food on the floor. And it's really sweet. Like once he got to the point where he could like throw a ball and play mm. fetch with Bean. Yeah. Oh my God, it was the best. He, f- It's like a game that they can both share. Yeah. So it the, the dream the the light at the end of the tunnel is there. Uh, second time around, we got around it by having Bean stay in a a location that was better for him, better for us, mm-hmm. and then take, incorporating him back in later, um, which which was tough. Yeah, but it it definitely doesn't just happen, and, and not everyone has that. You know, you. you like I see dogs on Instagram that are like napping with kids and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just like, God, I wish, mm-hmm. you know, it, like there, there are some dogs who take to babies and then there are some dogs who it's, it's going to be work. You know, you have to, yeah. you have to deal with the dog's energy and the baby's energy. And, and to the extent before you even have the baby, if you can start to get the dog comfortable around other babies, mm-hmm. right. you see a yeah. stroller on the street, like no jumping, yeah, really work on 
cueing him to not do the behavior that mm-hmm. you are n- know is going to be damaging later. Mm-hmm. And also like, you know, if you are thinking about having a kid and you have a dog now and you're like imagining that the dog isn't good with kids, like you either need to do something about it now or like your dog is not going to suddenly love your child because mm-hmm. they're your child. Yeah. It, doesn't it doesn't work that work way. Like that, it no. doesn't work that way. You know, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's only going to be work if you, if you have a dog that's aggressive to children, you know, like that's a, you're, you're getting yourself into a situation that is going to be yeah. very difficult. We should have a dog trainer on the podcast. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Click. Super fun. Well, thanks for listening to another episode of Baby Steps. If you want to get your question answered, you can email babystepsadvice at gmail.com. Pre-order our cookbook today, the Date Night Cookbook at datenightcookbook.com. Stories and recipes from our kitchen to yours. A decade of love and (laughs) dating in the kitchen. Um, But yeah, it's got... Uh, we poured our heart and soul into it and a uh, ton of fun. Y'all it's got know, a lot of special stuff. If, you, if you're already listening to this late in the podcast, you probably already got your copy. But if you don't, get on it. Um, yeah, subscribe, raise five stars, and we'll see you next Sunday. And life's a journey. Take baby steps. Take baby steps.